turn over the presentation to Mr. Kogan. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me just share my desktop so we can share the information. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to, on behalf of Power Probe, thank Medco and everybody attending tonight's uh, presentation on the hook. Uh, what you should be seeing right now is the key point sheet uh, that uh, Medco has made available to you. This is the six key points of the hook that we're going to be reviewing this evening. Uh, so you should have that available to you. Um, so we're going to get started with the presentation on the hook. Very the first thing that I want to talk about is the hook is designed to be used in conjunction with the PAL Probe 3 or on its own. Uh, being an ex-franchisee uh, myself, I know what it's like to go out there and sell a bunch of product and then have another product out there that you, you're afraid to talk about because you don't want to take in trades. So the thing you have to understand about the hook is it is a different level of diagnostics from Power Probe. It is not a replacement for the Power Probe 3. It is designed to be used in conjunction with the Power Probe 3. If you have a customer uh, or an end user that has a Power Probe 3, feel confident that you can sell them a hook. Or if he has a hook, feel confident that you can sell them a Power Probe 3. This presentation is going to show a few examples of using both tools at the same time. So with that, this presentation is designed to give you a brief overview of the key points that make the hook the ultimate circuit tester. And those key points are on that sheet that is uh, made available to everybody. Now you're going to quickly see the appeal this tool will have to the technician and see how easy it will sell for the franchisee. Let's keep a few things in mind. Technicians service a variety of industries, automotive, marine, truck, buses, RVs, ATVs, motorcycles, and don't forget the do-it-yourselfer. So we don't want to make up their mind for them. We, all of the industries basically can be serviced by a Power Probe hook or Power Probe products. Uh, case in point, marine, talking about the, the, the marine environment boats, we're actually more suited to the marine environment, if you can believe it or not, than we are the automotive. And the reason for that is boats don't have a common chassis, fiberglass boats or wood boats. The very first connection with a hook is to connect it to the battery. So all of your electrical testing can be done very easily. So it's just something to keep in mind. Let's not just limit our customers to the automotive or trucks. Let's think about it. Every technician needs power probes. Power probe makes the technician's lives better. What we're going to see is the hook will stand out because of all the unique features that are simply not offered anywhere else. So with that, we're going to talk about the first key point that is on that sheet, and it is the automatic voltage drop. Now, all these key points that you hear me talking about are a result of me driving around on the trucks and, and, and getting the uh, technicians involved in the sale process, and this is what turned them on, all the key points that are on that sheet. And the very first one was the automatic voltage drop. So let me explain to you what you see on the screen before you. You're looking at a hook and the probe that's normally sticking out of the hook has been removed and we used a meter lead and where it says test point we have an acupuncture pin sticking into the fuse. So that's the very first thing I want to talk about is, is because it has a standard four millimeter banana jack at the top of the tool, we can use any accessory at the tip of that tool. So right now, just picture a meter lead sticking out of the top of the hook, circling around in a U shape and going to that test point on that fuse. So in order to do the, the automatic voltage drop, we just connect the red and black leads to the vehicle's battery, and you'll see the battery voltage displayed on the bottom. And that's exactly what comes up. As soon as you power up the hook, you get the, that 12.7 volts, in this case, on the bottom, and that's the voltage at the battery. The tip voltage is displayed on the top. So where I have the test point, you guys are seeing 12.7 volts. So the point there is it's voltage drops at a glance. So even if the guy is not savvy and doing this kind of work all the time, he can compare those two numbers. Now, in this case, the voltage is the same at the battery and the same at the fuse where I'm testing right now. But what happens when it's not the same? Look at how obvious that looks. The tip voltage is at 6.4. Here I'm at a different test point. If you take a look, I'm on that blue fuse. The battery voltage is at 12.7. And this is a voltage 6.3 drop. Since the hook is connected to the battery positive and negative, no additional tests are required to perform the voltage drop test. And the whole point is how fast that is. He didn't have to do anything but simply go to the voltage source that he wanted to test 
and he's just comparing the bottom line to the top line. So like I said, whether it's an advanced guy or a guy who really doesn't do this kind of testing every day and is not used to doing voltage drop tests, all he has to do here is compare the numbers. The way an automotive technician would do voltage drop tests without the hook, he would be using a voltmeter, and he'd have to take multiple readings and do the math. So this is a very fast, easy way to do that. And this is the very first key point that we're talking about, the automatic voltage drop. Just compare the numbers. The second feature is, is kind of a big deal with the hook because it's an adjustable circuit breaker. Car manufacturers install power distribution boxes with the correct rated fuses. We've all seen them. We've been in the dashboard or under the hood, and you see all those different colored fuses. Well, the hook, with its adjustable circuit breaker, will match the correct rated fuse. So the technician, once he knows the size fuse of the circuit he's testing, those, what you see before you right now, are all the different circuit breaker settings that we can put anywhere from 2 amps to 65 amps, anything in between. So with that being said, just pick the same size circuit protection that the car manufacturer installs. Case in point, if I'm working on a circuit that's rated at 10 amps and I pick a 10 amp circuit breaker, I'm working at the same current that car manufacturers picked. I can't damage anything. But the hook took it one step further. The hook circuit breaker reaction time is much faster than the standard automotive fuse installed. What I mean by that is if you take a regular fuse and if you were to trip it or open it or pop it because there was a short, it, it, it takes a certain period of time, a few hundred milliseconds. The hook circuit breaker is thousands times faster than the standard automotive fuse. And the point being is as long as you match the same size circuit you're working on, you can't damage anything. So those are the first two key points that I've been talking about, the automatic voltage drop and the adjustable circuit breaker. So as I paint the picture of how to use this tool and how to market it, the technician would test the voltage. He would then match the same rated fuse with our adjustable circuit breaker, and he would continue doing his tests. And this is, this is how, how we need to talk about it. The next feature is called the hot shot mode. Now, the hot shot... Basically, how can a technician confirm the power or ground they are testing is good? Can a bad connection, dirty contacts, rust, corrosion, fool a tech into thinking the power or ground is good? Well, if you've ever been inside an automotive repair shop during a day and a tech is having a really horrible day, he might have just put a $1,000 module or an expensive component in, into a vehicle only to find out it's still acting up the same way. Somehow or another, he got fooled. And how, did, how does this happen? How, 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 does, how does a technician go and spend thousands of dollars worth of parts feeling that he is on the right path? Well, let me explain to you how this happens and where the hot shot feature kicks in. If you picture in your mind's eye a cable, it's a, it's a one foot long, and it's just floating in thin air right in front of your eyes. And, there, and inside that cable is 20 strands. And 19 of them are clean, broken, and one is hanging on. So I ask you that question, can one strand of wire do the work of all 20? Well, of course not. And that is how technicians get fooled. Rust, corrosion, bad connections, just picture in your mind's eye that one strand hanging on. It's all the same thing. Current can't flow through it correctly. But they get enough of a voltage reading where they get fooled. So they need a way to load test the circuit, to find out if all 20 strands are, are hanging on. Is there water or rust or corrosion? This is what the hotshot feature does. So let's take a look at it. We're right back to the first screen where we started. We see 12.7 and 12.7. But now I'm going to point out with lightning bolts the hotshot icon. Now that hotshot icon that you see, you'll see them in two, two locations there. One on the, on the screen itself, on the display, and one is where the button is. Now with the hotshot icon displayed, the tech will press the hot shot button. In one millisecond, the hook will load test the power or ground. The tech will receive a pass or fail. So let's just review for a second. I'm up at that test point at that fuse. You can see the little acupuncture pin sticking in that fuse right there. It looks like my voltage drop is good. I have 12.7 volts on the tip, 12.7 at the battery. Hey, it looks good. Well, not so fast. Let's see what happens when I press the hot shot button. It fails. Now that we've loaded the circuit with the hot shot button, we can see that this is not a good battery source voltage. 
this information for the tech means the car is going to be fixed faster. Now, keep in mind, this works the same way for grounds, too. Whether he's testing a supply power or ground, it works the same way. Now, why is the car going to get fixed faster? Well, the fact of the matter is, if you're driving down the road in your car and something stops working and your technician is now looking at the car, if he has now found that a supply power or ground to the whatever's not working is the problem, he stops and fixes that first. And that's the whole point. He didn't get tricked. Yeah, if you, if you remember the first screen, it looked like the battery voltage was fine. But when the hot shot loaded the circuit electrically, it confirms that it wasn't good enough. Let's take a look at another one that passes. Here's one that passes. You can see my test point is different. I'm on a different fuse here. So now that we've loaded the circuit with the hot shot button, we can see that this is a good battery source. This information for the tech confirms the need to keep looking for the problem. The tech did not get tricked into thinking the source voltage or ground is good when it might be faulty. Now, this is the huge time saver. Okay, he, did, he does have a good power. He does have a good ground. Keep looking for the problem. Often is the time the guys, uh, they will ohm test something or do resistance testing or do a voltage drop testing, and they won't load it. And as soon as, as, soon as they put the component in, they still have the problem driving down the road. And this is what the hotshot feature can absolutely avoid for the technician. So let's just review quickly. The key points that we've spoken about so far is the automatic voltage drop, the adjustable circuit breaker, and now the hotshot mode that load tests powers and grounds and confirms that we don't have a bad connection. The real jewel of the tool is my next key point, and this is the smart tip technology or smart tip advantage. Let me explain to you what it is. So the hook, once powered up, will be in the power probe hook mode. This is the main mode the hook will operate in. There's nothing for the tech to do other than to power up the tool. So it couldn't get any easier than that. This means when the technician touches the tip to any circuit, the hook will automatically choose the voltmeter or ohmmeter and select the correct range. Now let me just specify what is the range with this tool. Well, first of all, the hook will work on from a 12 volt system to a 48 volt system, and the tip will read up to 99.9 volts. So, so just so you know, how, you know what, what its ranges are for. All right, so now this is what half of the smart tip technology does. It picks the correct meter, and then it ranges it for you. That's the smart tip advantage. The other half of the smart tip technology is where we start really getting exciting because we're going to present data that the technicians have never had before. So when the technician supplies power or ground to the circuit, the hook will show the average current and the dynamic resistance live. And now there's nothing on the market today that will display the resistance of a circuit with the current flowing through it. So let me explain to you why this is such a big deal. This is a big deal because when somebody ohms out a component, and I'll just say a fuel injector, they want to ohm it out, currently they'll use an ohm meter. And not that there's anything wrong with an ohm meter, but you can get very, you can get fooled very easily. Well, let me explain to you quickly why. Inside a, an ohm meter is a 9-volt battery. So what happens is it sends a portion of that voltage and current from that 9-volt battery, which is very small, it's usually about 3 volts or so, and it sends it out through one lead, through, in this case, the fuel injector, and back to the other lead, and it takes a resistance reading. But that's not the real world operating condition that that fuel injector operates in. That's the problem, is that if the injector is going to break down, it's going to break down with full 12 volts and the, and the amount of current that was designed to go through it, not a portion of a 9-volt battery. So just because something with a, with a resistance test measuring ohms, ohms good, doesn't mean anything. It's not being loaded correctly. So what happens is with the hook, we've set the, let's say we're on a 10 amp circuit breaker, we have 12 volts, so now we're loading the circuit in the real world environment and we can see for the very first time what the resistance is and the current draw while operating in a full real world scenario. So if it's going to break down, I get to see it on the screen for the very first time. And the best part is the technician does not have to do anything to see all the data. The hook does it all. That is the smart tip advantage. Now, what you're going to see right now is I have a, a quick video, and unfortunately, the audio does not come through. So I'm going to explain to you what you're going to see on the screen. 
Okay, so I'm going to play it. So what you're going to see is I'm going to scan down and I'm going to show you some fans. Now the video is not about the fans, it's about the smart tip technology and how it works for the technician. So you're going to see me slide over in a second and I'm going to pick up the hook and I'm just showing you the battery voltage on the bottom and the preference line on the top right now is just showing 65 amp protection, that's where I've, I've um, selected it because it's such a large current drawing device. Um, and the rest of it is the preference line of how the tool is set up. Okay, so that those are going to be the fans. I'm going to go down to uh, to the lead on the fan in a second. And what you're going to see right now, as soon as I connect it, it's going to automatically select an ohmmeter. Watch. So I connected it, it goes right to an ohmmeter and ranged it for me. Technician didn't have to do anything. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put my thumb on the plus button and I'm going to press it and I'm going to power up those fans next to me and you're going to see the current and resistance live. Okay, that's the other half of the smart tip and that's what you're seeing. On the top you see the current and the bottom you're going to see the resistance and that's under full load. When I let go of that button, that fan motor on the left becomes a generator and produces a voltage. You're going to see the hook become a voltmeter. Technician's not going to have to do anything. Well, let's watch what happens. Okay? My thumb's going to come off the button any second now. Fan still spinning. There's your voltmeter. When the fan stops, there it goes. I switch to an ohmmeter. And the whole point of that video was just to show you that as the technician goes from circuit to circuit and activates component to component, the, the hook with the smart tip advantage does everything for the technician. Now this video, if you want to watch it in full length and hear what I've said, is available at the Midco website, but that basically is what the smart tip technology is. It just, if you connect to something with a path to ground, you're going to get an ohm, an ohm meter. If you have voltage on it, you're going to get a voltmeter. And when you activate a component, you're going to see the resistance and current. Moving on to the next key point is the voltage reference mode. And this is, again, like I, like I was said in the beginning, the hook is a completely different tool um, because of, of the different features that it has. And this is going to be one of the features that we use in conjunction with a Power Probe 3. So the hook is safe for computer diagnostics. Originally, everything that you saw, how the tool works, where it adapts from circuit to circuit, is the power probe hook mode. Technician has to do nothing. He just connects it to a battery. It's in the power probe hook mode. But now I'm the technician. I'm going to take it out of that mode, and I'm going to put it into this mode, the voltage reference mode. In this mode, the technician can use a half a volt up to five volts in half volt increments. And the reason why it's computer safe is because there's only 20 milliamp output. So let me just let me just say something about airbag testing. All the testing that you've heard me do right now, none of it applies to testing SRS or airbag systems. So this is a little bit of a disclaimer. All manufacturers require SRS systems to be deactivated, the module unplugged, all the airbags would be removed, and simulators would be installed. And that is the correct way to do airbag testing. But everything else, all the computer systems, the body and the chassis systems, other than airbags, can be tested in the methods that I'm showing you. So with that being said, let's go back to, to the uh, voltage reference mode. So like I said, the tech can use from half a volt to five volts in half volt increments. And this is what it would look like in the tool. You would pick the voltage reference mode, and in the center right now, you'll see half a volt, and then on the right-hand side, it'll say one volt, and I can go one and a half, two, two and a half, all the way on up to five volts. So I can bench test computer sensors if I wanted to. It would be safe. So let's see how this all works. You have a circuit failure code. Now that's a snap with the hook in the Power Probe 3 as a team. Let me just explain. Circuit failure codes are something that technicians face every single day whether it's for an O2 sensor, or a throttle positioning sensor, or whatever sensors underneath the hood, there's hundreds of them. And they get a circuit failure, failure code, and the manufacturers have all these long trouble trees to help the technicians diagnose the cars. So what I'm going to offer you is a very fast, easy way for your end user to diagnose a car with a few simple steps. So, inducing a voltage 
into a computer circuit such as a one volt for an O2 sensor. Keep in mind, in that previous screen, I showed you how we went from half a volt to one volt. What that means is I'm going to send one volt out the tip, okay, and into whatever I connect it to, but limited to 20 milliamps. That's 20 one thousandths of an amp. So in this case, if I have an O2 sensor code, I'm basically going to just unplug the O2 sensor underneath the hood, and I'm going to connect the hook's tip into the engine harness, and this is how he's going to diagnose a car with it. Now the technician can look for that one volt signal on his scan tool. And that's the interesting thing about PowerPro products, okay, especially the hook, is that you're going to use this with your scan tool. So he gets a code for, in this case, an O2 sensor, but it could be any sensor, and then he unplugs that sensor, puts one volt in, and if he sees it on his scan tool, great, look at what he just did. He diagnosed the whole harness and the computer, all that's fine. He would look at the sensor or, or continue going towards the sensor and ground. But here's the kicker. If the reading is incorrect on his scanner, he takes a power probe 3 and looks for the 1 volt signal the hook is providing. So he follows the harness until he finds the brake. If there's no brake and he gets it all the way back to the computer connector, he needs a computer. It's just that simple. The whole point is it's fast, it's easy, it's computer safe, and this is a, a very fast test that any technician can get consistent results with. And it's computer safe, so you can put this voltage in. Now, one one of the um, the last things that I'm going to talk about, because we've we've gone through five features of the tool so far. That was the automatic voltage drop, the adjustable circuit breaker, the hot shot mode, the smart tip technology, and the voltage reference mode. The last one that we're going to talk about this evening is the switch mode. Now the power, the supply power and grounds with three different modes. This is what the hook is capable of doing. And in here, we are also going to be using the Power Probe 3 in conjunction with the hook. So the very first one that we're going to discuss is the momentary mode. And this is where you press either the plus or minus for power or ground uh, for the amount of time you need to function to test the circuit. So if I press the power button, it's going to stay powered for as long as I press the button. When I let go, it goes away. And that's pretty common. We, we, we understand that. But now we're going to talk about some of the more advanced modes that the hook has, the latch mode. In this mode, you'll see an L on the screen once we pick it. You press the plus or negative key. This will keep the function on until you press the button again. This adds a few things that we can do. One, I can put a power ground into a circuit to either activate a component for as long as I want without having to hold the tool so I can go work remotely away from the hook if I need to. But two, the, the, the thing here is when I spoke about the circuit breaker, okay, I'm going to go all the way back to the second feature. I talked about an adjustable circuit breaker. Well, what I didn't tell you at that time is not only is it adjustable, but it's an automatic circuit breaker. And why am I tying the automatic circuit breaker with the latch mode? Well, this is why. If I go on a circuit and it's shorted, shorted to ground, shorted to power, whatever the case may be, and I touch the tip and I supply power to a shorted circuit, the circuit breaker will automatically trip over and over again and it makes a nice high toggle tone. Now in a shop environment, I can hear that toggle tone on the other end of the car as I'm manipulating the harness, trying to find where the brake or the short to ground is. And as soon as the ground, as, so, as soon as I find it, the tone will stop cycling. So in the latch mode, the power or ground stays activated and then I can rely on the automatic adjustable circuit breaker not to damage anything, why? Because we've picked the same rated fuse that the manufacturer has chosen, and it's cycling until I can manipulate the harness to find the location. So those are two things just with the latch switch mode that we can do. Activate a component for a long period of time without holding the tool, or I can then use the latch feature with the adjustable automatic circuit breaker so I don't have to keep putting fuse after fuse in if I have a shorted circuit. But the last mode, the pulse mode, and I know I shouldn't talk about my personal favorites. It is my personal favorite, and this is where the, um, the, the bulk of the diagnostics for me would kick in as being a technician myself. The pulse mode means when I press the, the uh, power or ground key, 
this will cycle the power or ground on and off until you press that button again. So if you've ever taken music lessons and, and you have a metrodome in the background, every second it'll go power, power, or if you're applying ground, ground, ground. And this is a really nice feature because now if I had a body or a chassis circuit failure, let's say on an air compressor for suspension or a tail light, I can then take a full 12 volts, again, protected to the same rated fuse or a ground, and I can oscillate that on and off. And then, because that the hook is being used to, to introduce this signal into a shorted circuit, I could then use a Power Probe 3 to look for that cycling signal I'm sending in, especially if the, the color wire that I'm looking for is, let's say, uh, black or orange with a black trace, and there's a whole bunch of them in a harness. Let's say I have a, a harness that's an inch thick. There's 30, 40 wires in there, and there's a few of the same color. How am I going to know if I'm on the right wire? You're looking for that oscillating signal. That's w another way to use both tools at the same time. The other thing that, uh, that is a benefit to using the pulse mode is identifying a component that is hard to pick out. Like picture a lineup. If you have a row of solenoids or a row of relays that all look identical, and the picture that the manufacturer has supplied to the end user is basically lackluster or it doesn't match what's in the car, but the technician is using a wiring schematic that says that the relay that I need is on terminal number three of a module, I can go to terminal three of that module and pulse it and just pick out the solenoid or relay that's clicking. It really is true flexibility for any diagnostic scenario. So here what I've done is I've, I've given you six very simple key points to talk about, and if you have the sheet in front of you when you're talking to other salespeople or, or you're going to give these to the franchisees out there or the independents that are selling it, they can have this sheet, talk to the customers about it, um, that's basically the best way to sell this tool. I'd like to thank you guys for listening to my presentation. I'll take any questions you guys have at this point. Bob, you let yes. me know if there's any questions. Not a problem. Um, so far, uh, at this point, there is nothing. Again, I'd like to, uh, on the behalf of Power Probe, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for uh, joining me this evening. And I'm going to pass it off to you, Bob. No problem. Thank you. Okay, um, Jeff, at this point, there doesn't appear to be any questions. Um, one thing I would like to reiterate, if there are uh, if anyone who is listening this evening, uh, Medco employees or our, our, our customers, um, by all means, please contact your Medco salesperson. Um, there is a question here from uh, Steve Fails. Uh, uh, Steve, yeah, there is no problem. You can get copies of the presentation. Uh, we will be uh, putting the presentation on the Medco website. So. Um, if you want to contact our marketing department uh, or your Medco sales representative tomorrow, they can tell you exactly where to go to retrieve this information. Uh, as Jeff had said earlier in his presentation, the uh, the sheet that we had we saw on the first screen is something that Jeff had worked along with our marketing department in compiling, and I know some of our salespeople have um, used it out on the street, and it's been very very informative when dealing with uh, educating uh, the salespeople that work for our customers and then also uh, going into the shop. So, Hey, Bob, uh, if yes. I may, um, the other thing that you guys can do is you can always go to YouTube or the Power Probe website. We have several videos on the hook uh, that I know that I've, from talking to franchisees, they have um, basically shown those videos to their customers and have sold the hooks without even saying a word. The Great. hook tutorial, um, there's one that says uh, questions and answers, sporadic voltage. There's one for uh, uh, the ground best practices. So definitely the powerprobe.com, or you can go to YouTube, just type in Power Probe Hook, and those videos are there also for you. Yeah, and actually some of the salesmen have been emailing me during the, the course of the presentation. And um, 
they're saying that they've, they've used that sheet and it's worked extremely well for them. So uh, that is readily available. Um, you can also contact here again your, your Medco salesperson or the Medco marketing department. We can make plenty of those available to you. There will be some broadcasts going out this week in regards to Power Probe, uh, and we will be including that information in those broadcasts as, uh, as we had in some of the previous broadcasts. Um, uh, at this point in time, uh, I think we, we can sign off. Um, we'd like to once again thank you all for participating. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much. Jeff, just so you know, I'm getting quite a few compliments um, from the people who have attended this evening's presentation on the uh, the conciseness of the information, um, and uh, it looks like you know they, we've helped clear up some some misconceptions and some uh, uh, some misinterpreted ideas. So, uh, absolutely, again, and I and I look forward to coming back and either covering the hook again more in depth or some of the other Power Pro products that we have for you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely, we are looking to to continue some additional Power Pro presentations based on the variety of products that you have. This being the, the newest, latest, uh, we wanted to try to get some, some information out there to, uh, to our customer base, but there's a lot of existing products that you have that I'm sure our customers aren't aware of, so we will definitely be scheduling some, uh, some future webinars in regards to the rest of the PowerProbe lineup. Um, at this point in time, we will sign off for the evening. We would like to thank everyone who participated. I uh, hope you have an all, I hope you all have a good evening and if there's anything that we can do to assist you please don't hesitate to call. Thank you very much and have a good evening.